All right, so we have the Ample Game first generation and the Ample Game second generation. We did a little comparison on it real quick. So both have removable pop filters, as you can see. Now the old one has a smiley face that not a lot of people liked, and this one changed it to a very faint version. You can barely see it if you're really looking for it, but it's a very slim and modern, sleek design. This uh, older one looked a little cheaper. They both do very good jobs at actually blocking out P's, S's, and T's, so it's really nice. Peter Piper, Picker Pepper, Pellins, Melons. Do or don't like the pop filter. This is what it sounds like, obviously. Peter Piper, Picker Pepper, Pellins, Melons. Peter Piper, Picker Pel Pellins, Melons. No deal. So please. As for shock mounts, I did a little shock mount test. Shock absorption. So we're gonna go a little bit closer and move the microphone around just to see if this does a little good job at this microphone thing. As opposed to the Ample Game, since this one had a really crappy shock mount, as you've seen from the past, I think the shock mount on this one is very good. So if you hear any noise, yeah, that one really sucks. So this one, and uh, the Ample Game 2.0 is far better than the Ample Game first gen. The first gen is a little smaller, and it just looks uglier, and it doesn't really do a whole lot of job. I'm pretty sure it's because it's too tight. For the RGB, for the Ample Game, let me go ahead and show you. So that's the RGB for the Ample Game. This is what it looks like. It's a static multicolor mode that cannot be changed, and uh, it goes on and off with the LEDs, so that's the mute button as well, which is not ideal. So if you wanna go on mute, you won't really know when you're on mute, or if it's even on. Yeah, so it's a little confusing, and I didn't really like it for the Ample Game first gen, but for the second gen, they actually took some ideas from their previous mics, from the K658, for a dedicated mute button on top and a dedicated RGB button on the back side, which can cycle through multiple solid colors, static colors, multicolor modes, and just a ton of colors in general, which I really appreciate. And even if you wanted to, you could press and hold it and turn it off completely and still have the microphone on and off as you wish. So I really appreciate that on Five Lines Behind. It's really, really helpful. I personally like it on the original Ample Game static color changing mode, which is this one. It'll just flow from random colors, but you can choose your own red or purple. For the little tripod here, this is the one that comes with the Ample Game, so it's a little actual tripod. It's very cheap, very uh, unreliable. It's just not that good. But for the Ample Game 2.0, you have a really good interchangeable, so I'm pretty sure you can change it out, but it's a nice sleek uh, plastic base, I believe. Yeah, most of it's made out of plastic, which is the same for the Ample Game first gen, but this one looks like super cheap, ugly plastic, and it has like, you know, it has Chinese certification and stuff like that. Ample Game 2.0, you don't really have anything on there. Minimal branding, you literally only have an etched in Fifon on the front, but you can't really see it, which is nice. So very minimal branding just very nice in general overall and just it looks sleeker like it's way better looking than this one for the price point this one retails for about under $30 I believe right now and this one's about 47 so closer to 50 in terms of sound quality they're very similar I want to say I'll, I'll do a comparison right now what is going on guys today's video we have another microphone comparison video today's video we're going to be testing out which one is better between the ample game versus the ample game that's crazy What's going on guys, today's video we have another microphone comparison video. In this video we have the 5 Fine versus the 5 Fine Ample Game. That's crazy. Alright, so yeah, now we're at 100% gain, so this is 100% gain, and this is what it sounds like. This is typically on how I normally talk for a voiceover or whatever. Roughly around 4 inches is the very good for the sound quality, that's where it has the maximum potential for it. For pretty much any voice, if you have a deep voice, quiet voice, anything, 4 inches is about the best length. Now that does separate from the pop filter as well so you don't get really close to the pop filter and it doesn't really do anything because if you're really close to the pop filter it won't do anything. So that's what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like for the Fifine Ample Game 1.0, the first gen, the original. Now we're going to go to the second one. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the Ample Game 2.0. So this is the sound quality on the Ample Game 2.0. Let me know what it sounds. We're roughly around four inches like before for the Fifine first gen. So this is what it sounds like. Let me know how you think it sounds. If you hear any echo, because we're technically towards a wall and we're towards the table. We're speaking towards the table. So if you hear any reverb or anything like that, just let me know. All right, so when it's a hot day, you're typically wanting to have fans on, other stuff on. We're gonna be testing out if it does a really good job at canceling that out. 
Now, no microphone can really cancel out human voices or background actual sound. A lot of people get mixed up from that between noise cancellation and like background. Like they don't get the ideal meaning of that. You'd have to actually have soundproof room in order to block out people's voice. And even then that's extremely hard to do. So microphones can only drop down, especially budget ones, can only drop down fans or hissing or, you know, if you have a Xbox going on and it has a really loud fan, it'll cancel that out. It also depends on where your microphone is. So if your microphone is in front of you, like in front like this, and the keyboard is behind you, it might cancel it out a little bit because the microphone's on the front, not the back. So it might cancel out a little bit, but if it's like right here where mine is then you can hear both the keyboard and the mouse so it's just personal placement on where you place your microphone it has to be an ideal spot and it just has to be smart you just have to think about it and this is the third setting for the air purifier if you don't know what that is it's basically just an air purifier similar to wind so it's going to be hot days this is what it's going to be for noise cancellation so this is the ample game and it does a really good job beats pretty much HyperX and blue yeti if you haven't seen that video all right, now we're on the third setting for the air purifier on the Ample Game 2.0. So this is the sound quality on the background noise isolation test. So which one ever is better, we're going to do a side by side comparison of both of them right now. So that way you can be able to see which one is better in the long run. This is the entire thing. Now I don't typically say which one's better at the end. I will leave it up to you guys to decide, but let me know which one you think is better. I'll say my opinion at the, at the end, but let me know. All right, so that's that. That's pretty much everything I have for the Ample Game and the Ample Game 2.0. So this is the old, this is the new. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm gonna be doing a ton of more videos about this microphone since this microphone slightly beats this microphone in some aspects. They're very similar in sound quality, I know that, but in terms of look and functionality, it gives it to this one. This one does have a headphone jack, mic monitoring basically. Uh, this one does not. This one just has a USB type C port and that's pretty much it, as well as gain adjustment. But the gain adjustment isn't really a good placement. The pop filter looks ugly and uh, there's no RGB control. So that's a bummer. This one has pretty much everything you need for streaming and you can basically customize it to your liking. You also have mic monitoring. So if you need to do, I don't know, ASMR or something, you can do that. Very simple with the USB type C cable, which is included. And you have a base and you have a thread for boom arm. So it's pretty much everything that you need in a microphone. In terms of packaging, the Ample Game first gen is a little bit better because it's been out a lot longer. So you have better packaging. Uh, the Ample Game second gen or the A8 is a little bit, it's all right right now. Yeah, I feel like it'll get better, but it's all right right now. But I don't mind it. As long as the microphone sounds good, it sounds good. So we're all for it. Anyways, if you guys want to see more microphone comparison videos, you want to see which one is going to be better than this microphone, let me know in the comments down below. It could be any price range. Just let me know which one. This is the next sneak peek of the next microphone. So that's that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.